Hello there and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to continue our conversation on memory with Unit 5, Topic 3, Storing. Last time we talked about encoding, which is when information is being processed to be prepared to be stored. We can break stored memories down into semantic memory and episodic memory. Semantic memory is memory that is explicit memory. It's general knowledge and facts. For example, people's names and their birth dates. Episodic memory, on the other hand, is explicit memory of events and experiences. For example, that feeling you get opening your birthday presents or that memory of you going to a theme park. Semantic memory and episodic memory are what make up the explicit memory system. These memories are processed in the hippocampus. This is where memory consolidation occurs. Here memories are prepared to be put into long-term memory. Memories are not kept for long in the hippocampus. They are only in the hippocampus for a short period of time, and then they are stored in other parts of the brain. There is also implicit memory, sometimes referred to as unconscious memory or automatic memory. These memories are formed with the help of the cerebellum and the basal ganglia. These are memories that use our past experiences without us even knowing. For example, if you get shocked when walking through a doorway at school, you're less likely to walk through that doorway on another day. Even if you do not remember getting shocked, you will hesitate because you will have that implicit memory. Implicit memories play a role in our conditioned reflexes, classical conditioning, remembering space, time, frequency, and motor and cognitive skills. One other aspect with storing memories comes from our emotions. When we are excited or stressed, certain hormones are released that promote memory formation. For example, stress provokes the amygdala to boost activity in the brain's memory forming areas. Events that are extremely stressful, traumatic, or emotional form almost unforgettable memories. The stronger the emotional experience, the stronger the memory. In some cases, we create what is known as a flashbulb memory. These are memories that come from emotionally significant moments in our lives. These are memories that are clear and specific. For example, if you ask someone who was alive during 9-11, they probably can tell you exactly where they were and what they were doing. These two memory systems are part of our dual track memory system. This is another example of parallel processing, a concept we talked about in our Unit 5 Topic 1 video. Remember, parallel processing is when the brain uses multiple tracks of memory at the same time. You can see this process illustrated here. Starting at the top, we have our parallel processing. On the right side, we have our automatic processing. This is going to be our implicit memory. Our automatic processing is processed in the cerebellum and basal ganglia and becomes implicit memory. For example, when I say ba da ba ba ba, Huh? Did you say I'm loving it? I'm guessing you didn't purposely memorize this slogan, but it has become an implicit memory. It's in your long-term memory. Remember, time, space, frequency, motor skills, classical conditioning, all of those things would fall under our implicit memory. These are memories that we have that we didn't consciously try to make. Now, our effortful processing is processed in the hippocampus and frontal lobe. This processing uses the information processing model we talked about from our Unit 5 Topic 1 video. First, we have our sensory memory, which then goes to our working or short-term memory, and from there, goes into our long-term memory. You can see the long-term memory represented by the last part of effortful processing with our explicit memories, which consists of episodic memories, which are experiences, and semantic memories, which are facts. Now, before we wrap up, I want to quickly highlight two more concepts with memory, and that is iconic memory and echoic memory. Both of these memories are sensory memories, which are memories that are very brief. Iconic memory is memory that involves memory with visual information, and echoic memory deals with auditory information. These memories only last for a few seconds. Iconic memory is part of the reason why you can see the afterglow of a sparkler after someone moves it back and forth. And echoic memory is why even if you're not actively listening to the people talking around you, because let's face it, you're probably watching the sparkler, you probably can recite the last sentence they said. It's because of your sensory memory. All right, now you know the drill. The time has come to practice what we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section below. And if you found value in this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Plus, don't forget to check out my ultimate review packet. It is a great resource that'll help you with all the different concepts in AP psychology. It has practice worksheets, practice quizzes, tests, study guides, answer keys, review videos. I mean, honestly, it's a great resource and I'm a little biased. I realize I made it, but it'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.